Hello, my name is Beth Domkowski, and I'm coming to you from the Office of Admissions at Rowan University in Glassboro, New Jersey. Welcome to Rowan Confidential. Uh, today, I have Kim Vogt with me. Welcome, Kim. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Kim is an academic advisor at Rowan University, where she works with incoming freshmen who are undeclared in their major, as well as change of major students of all grade levels. She's an academic coach for academic probation students and teaches a class that specifically focuses on acclimating students to college and helping them transition successfully. She received her bachelor's degree in sociology from Rutgers University and her master's degree in counseling and educational settings from Rowan University. When she is not counseling students, her part-time jobs include being a yoga instructor, a cookie baker, and a dog mom. What kind of dog do you have? I have a uh, Karen Terrier. A Karen Terrier. It's like a Toto from The Wizard of Oz. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. You didn't name it Toto, did you? No, his name's Scruffy. Oh, Scruffy. (laughs) Okay. Oh, that's so cute. How old is Scruffy? Uh, Scruffy's 15. 15. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, So other than Scruffy, what wakes you up in the morning? What's your inspiration or passion? Um, So I absolutely love coming here and working with the students every day. I've had jobs in the past that I've worked where I really didn't have that feeling. And here it motivates me to come up and know that I'm going to make a difference in their day. Um, I love the support staff that I work with and we really work well with each other and can bounce ideas off of each other. And that just really motivates me to come in here in the morning and, and make a difference not only for my coworkers, but also for the entire Rowan community. So you are an academic advisor. What does that mean? Maybe somebody who hasn't met with an academic advisor, what do you do? What's your relationship like with the students? How do you meet them? How do you talk to them? How do they find you? Right. So um, a lot of students who I work with don't have a major. Um, Every student who comes into Rowan University, when they are assigned a specific major, they have a specific academic advisor that we work with. So in our department, there's probably about five or six of us who work with the exploratory studies or, or you know, undeclared students. Um, and they can make appointments with us through online. They can make appointments by coming into our office. A lot of times we have walk-in hours from nine to 10 every day, and they can come in and meet with any any of the five of us that work up there. And um, as an academic advisor, in our role, it's a little bit different from someone who is in a specific major because they work with students helping them plan out their coursework for that specific major, where ours is a little bit more exploring what types of majors they want to have and then also looking at the coursework that could go towards any type of major that they want to have. So working with us, helping to develop a plan of where they might want to go and then kind of laying out a path for how they could reach that. So working in admissions, when I meet students on the road and they say, you know, I'm not sure what I want to do or I think I want to do this, but I'm not entirely sure Mm. that's where I want to end up. They always seem to be afraid that not declaring something is going to hold them back time-wise. Right. Like it's going to take them longer to graduate. Do you Mm -hmm. find that to be true at all? I find that a lot of students have a concern about that. A lot of parents have a concern about that. Uh, when in reality, that's that's not true. Um, I will say with the exception of a major, maybe like engineering, where you really have to be on track from the very beginning, you might have to end up going an extra semester. Um, but for the majority of different majors that are here, there are a number of courses that you can take towards that that specific major um, or a totally major you have no idea about. Um, And there's certain core requirements that we have here that you have to complete. So we can help students take their composition course, their literature course, their artistic course, and say, we know that these are going to count towards your graduation requirements no matter what. So if you are still unsure as to whether you want to do education or psychology or business, that's fine. We can still set you on a path where we know that you're going to fulfill certain requirements for graduation. And then when you finally transfer into that major, you'll just have to take those major requirements and you won't have to worry about your gen eds because the gen eds are going to be ones that you're taking anyway. Oh yeah. You'd have to take them for any major. Yeah. So the students that are coming in and they're not really sure what they want to study, what's the community like for them? I feel like some of the other majors, like there are learning communities Mm -hmm. where they could live together. Are these students just kind of floating out there in oblivion or 
is there support for them? No. So there's there's great support for them. Um, there are specific, we have one of the courses that I know that you mentioned that I was teaching that's the one that acclimates students to mm-hmm. college is called Rowan 101. Um, oh, and yes. a lot of students who are in majors sometimes don't even end up taking that course where for the exploratory studies students who are undeclared, we make sure that they're in one of those courses. And everyone who's in that course with them is also an exploratory studies student. So a lot of the advisors teach that course. Um, a lot of people who work with the undeclared students teach that course to kind of, you know, lessen their fears and say, it's okay, you're not the only one here who who doesn't know exactly what they want to do yet. Um, and we have a great program that's called the Exploratory Studies Workshop, which allows students once a week to go and hear different speakers from each individual college, like the College of Communications or the College of Education, or the College of Business. And program directors and advisors and professors will come in and talk to them and really kind of sell their major to the students saying, here's why we would want you to join the radio, TV, and film uh, major. Here's why you should join the College of Business. And so they can see when they're sitting in this big classroom that, you know, we have about hundreds of you that are, are, are in the same position. So I think it makes them feel less alone when they realize that they're not the only ones that are still trying to find their way. Now, you didn't know what you wanted to study in school, correct? No, you I didn't. A sociology degree. Mm-hmm. And how did you find your way to sociology? Yeah, so um, I I had switched around majors a bunch of times, which I always tell students. You know, I started off as I think anthropology, and then was in law and justice and political science for a while, and finally settled on sociology. For me, it was just kind of figuring out. Um, what I was good at and what I thought that I would be able to do in the future with something. I had kind of planned on either going to law school or I knew I was going to go to grad school. So I wanted something that for me, I was you know, a strong student in that subject and that I knew that I would get a really good GPA. Um, and then that you know, my plan was to kind of move forward into extra types of schooling. So I knew that that was my goal and finding that goal helped me kind of pick the major that I wanted to go with. Did you know what sociology was when you were starting college? College? No, I absolutely did not. And I took a, an intro to sociology class and I really enjoyed it about, you know, how different groups of people work together and how different communities interact. And And I just, I loved learning about it. And then from there, I just sort of took off with that major. Um, and I find that with a lot of students, they'll ask me, you know, what is anthropology? What is sociology? Because that's something that a lot of students don't often have when they're in, you know, a K to 12 setting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I tell students that all the time when they're, 17 or 18 and just starting college or thinking about this journey, you know, there are certain jobs that you know the title of, Mm -hmm. but there's so many different ways to make money and contribute to society. Oh, yeah. And they, there are majors they don't even know that could take them down the path that's right for them. Right. Um, So doing this, how do you know that you're being successful? So I think the, uh, the thing that's interesting for us is that, again, for the advisors that work in a specific major, they kind of work with those students for all three years or four years or however long they're in that major. Um, For us, we know we're being successful in a way if we kind of don't always see them again because (laughs) because we're the ones who are kind of trying to set them off in a in a path where they're now going to be in a major. So if I work with a student who is, say, going towards marketing, I'll plan for them to go towards marketing and then they get into marketing and it's kind of like, well, goodbye. Goodbye, nice yeah. to see you, thank um, you. Which is successful for us. But it, it's always nice when students come back and they say, you know, I wouldn't have, have picked this major had it not been for you bringing this up. Or I always thought that I w- had to do a college of business major in order to get a job. And now I realized that I could do my, my psych degree with this minor and still go in the direction that I want to go in. And, you know, that's been really rewarding for me to show them that there's not just one path always to get to where you need to go, that there's usually a lot of times more than one option. Uh, And I think when they come back and realize that and say, I love my major now, and I'm so glad that, you know, you helped me find this, that's really rewarding for for me. It's amazing how, um, you know, at a place like Rowan, you can really have all of your interests appear on your transcript. You oh, know, yeah. You can major in something. You can minor in something else. Um, even outside of the classroom, I mean, you're a yoga teacher. Yeah. How how, how did that happen? Yeah. So um, I found that that gave me a lot of balance when I was in when I was in college and when I was in grad school. And um, it's something that I've kind of co- incorporated a lot into the way that I work with students, kind of saying, you know, you have to maintain, you know, some wellness in here. You have to maintain balance in your life. You have to look at where you're going long-term versus where you are short-term. And, you know, that's something 
something that has really helped me in my everyday life. So I kind of have used that to incorporate that a little bit into, into my, my style of counseling. That's great. Now, I know that you work with the students. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there are parents that come across your path as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So how would you advise the parents of an incoming student that it's okay for their student to not know what it is they want to study and come in exploratory studies? Um, well, first of all, I would say that a lot of students who come in with majors end up switching their major. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think more so than than people realize. So we have, you know, along with the department of working with these exploratory studies students, we also work with change of major. So when students say to us, oh, I'm changing my major, is that weird? No, No. we have a whole department dedicated to doing that. Um, So I think with, with parents saying, you know, well, why... You know, if my student doesn't know exactly what they want to do, you know, I don't. Is that going to be okay? Is their graduation going to be delayed and all? And it's, it, you know, the answer to that would be no. And we have a whole community and resources here that are going to help your student. Like we had said, the number of classes that you're going to be taking, you could use towards a lot of different majors. Um, and if you are planning on going towards, say, a more restrictive major like an, an, an engineering or a music, we can still find things that are going to work you towards that goal. Um, and then it, you're still going to be on track for graduation. And sometimes it's good for students, I think, to kind of take a step back and say, I really don't know what I want. Um, Or even if they think they know what their long-term goal is, they might not know that there's a lot of different pathways to get them to where they want to go. And we can help them find the path that's best for them. And I think that that's why it's so important that they sometimes come in without always a specific goal in mind, because then they have more possibility for where they can end up. It's so important that they try things. I tell students all the time, you know, if you do something and you don't like it, like if you do an internship and you don't like it or you take a class and you don't like it, that's a good thing because you've learned something. You mm-hmm. learned what you don't want to do. Oh, and that's absolutely. And it sounds like you and I actually had a similar experience. We were both thinking about going to law school. Mm-hmm. What was your deciding factor that this was not for you? Oh, it was when I started working at a law firm. Yes. Because uh, I had an idea in my mind of what I wanted to do for for law. And then I got... was. You know, I got into a job and I started working there and I thought, you know, I don't, I don't like doing all this reading and researching and writing and, and it just wasn't for me. And I saw that pretty quickly, um, which is one of the reasons why I I ended up coming back here and going to grad school for counseling. Um, Because there's a lot of things that I think, you know, I would have done differently um, if I'm looking back now, but, you know, once you get in there and start experiencing a certain work environment, you know, that so many times we always tell students, you know, do internships, talk to people who work in the field, figure out what it is that this field actually is, because there's a lot of common misconceptions about different lines of work. Yes. Um, and I've had students that are in a major and come in to meet with me as a change of major because of the fact that they say, I went in and did an internship over the summer and I absolutely hate this. Like, yep. is there still time to change my major? And usually the answer is yes, there's absolutely because we would rather have you change now than have you go out into the workforce and then you've worked for a year or two and you realize you hate this and now you kind of have no option except to maybe come back and get another degree or you know, you're trying to navigate things then. It's a lot easier when you're in school to do that. So when you were starting out, I'm sure people gave you advice. Um, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self knowing what you know now? Mm-hmm about college, about grad school, about the different pathways that students can take. Right. I would say, first of all, keep your options open. Uh, I think that a lot of students come in feeling really lost because they don't have a specific goal in mind. And that's fine because you know, you know, you have endless possibilities for what you could do here. And I think sometimes that's scary for them, but to really say, take this opportunity to then talk to your professors, talk to your counselors, talk to your academic advisors, talk to people who are in the field that you think you want to be in and actually find out what that is. And then ask them how they got where they are. Um, Because a lot of times people will have these totally different backgrounds or or they change jobs later on, you know, even for me, if you said, 
well, being a specific academic advisor, you must have a specific background. Well, not necessarily. I mean, there's so many people who work in our office and one has a background in athletics and one has a background in history and one has a background in, you know, hospitality. And like, you know, we all ended up in the same place. So it's just as important, like you said, to to kind of start knocking off what you don't want to do as opposed to knowing exactly what you do want to do. Um, and I would say just, you know, get as much information as you can from anyone. I mean, talk to your parents, friends. If anybody has any ideas of what you think you want, you know, it's always important to like find out from people what that actually is like in the real world. Yeah. See what the day to days are like and try to reverse engineer it so that you can get there. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, So lastly, why Rowan? Why Rowan for you? Why Rowan for students? So I really appreciate the community that's here. Uh, Like I said, I love all of the people that I work with on a day-to-day basis. And I think that there's a really large support system for students who are here. Um, One of the things that I love about the university, because as I said, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I transferred schools. I went to two different schools. Oh, no, you didn't. Um, I originally went to the University of Delaware, and then I finished up at Rutgers. and, um, And then I've been here at Rowan for my master's. So I've been quite a few places. And I love that this school has a lot of the the, I'll say the big school opportunities, but mm-hmm. with the small school feel. Yeah. Um, there's a lot here that gives the students the support that maybe, you know, you're not just going to be a number because your class has 500 people in it. Like we don't have anything like that. But yet if you want to go watch the football game and go to homecoming, we do have that for you. Um, so I think that you get a lot of the opportunities that the big schools would would give you, but you have that small school environment, that small support system. Um, I know my students' names in my classes and I know my students who come in for advising and you really get that one-on-one with with the people who work here and your professors and everything, which I think makes it feel more like home. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, thank you so much for coming out and talking thank to you us for today. Me. Yeah. And this has been Kim Vote on Rowan Confidential. Mm-hmm.